Lesson 4, Creating Cast Missions. One of the most important things that JTAC should know about creating a cast mission is the difference in the three types of terminal attack control and when to use them. Type 1 control is used when the JTAC must visually acquire the attacking aircraft and the target for each attack. Type 2 control is used when the JTAC requires control of individual attacks but assesses that either visual acquisition of the attacking aircraft or target at weapons release is not possible or when the attacking aircraft is not in a position to acquire the mark or target prior to weapons release. Type 3 control is used when the JTAC requires the ability to provide clearance for multiple attacks within a single engagement subject to specific attack restrictions. Type 3 control does not require the JTAC to visually acquire the aircraft or the target. However, all targeting data must be coordinated through the JTAC or the ground commander. In an effort to save time, further explanation and examples of when to use the different types of control will only be given during the live course. Feel free to pause the video and read tables 11 and 12 for more details. Next we will cover the CAST 9-line and 5-line brief. The 9-line is the standard CAST brief for fixed wing aircraft. The 5-line is the standard CAST brief for rotary wing aircraft. They are both used to quickly and accurately pass information about a CAST mission between the JTAC and pilot. First we will cover the 9-line briefing. Line 1 tells the pilot which IP to begin their attack from. Line 2 tells the pilot the bearing from the IP to the target. Line 3 tells the pilot the range from the IP to the target in meters. Line 4 tells the pilot the elevation of the target. Line 5 is for the description of the target. It can be basic or in-depth. Line 6 is for target location. It can be given as a 6 or 8 digit grade coordinate or a bull's call. Line 7 is for target marking method. Options are no mark, smoke, laser, IR strobe, or IR laser. Line 8 is for notifying the pilot of friendly locations. Use cardinal directions and the distance in meters from the target to the friendly location. Also use this line to notify if the friendly position will be marked by smoke or IR strobe. Line 9 is used for assigning egress directions to the pilot. Unless there are threats they should avoid, you can simply use pilot discretion. After the ninth line, the JTAC can give remarks if they have any, such as ordnance requested, threats in the area, final attack heading, hazards like power lines, or a notification that it will be a danger close attack. Now we will cover the five line brief. Due to the lower altitude and speed and increased maneuverability of rotary wing aircraft, their brief is shorter and more compact. Line one is for informing the pilot of the type of control to be used, the method of attack, referred to as MOA, and the ordinance requested. Options for MOA are bomb on coordinates, referred to as BOC, or bomb on target, referred to as BOT. BOC is used to designate an area attack, such as a rocket run, while BOT is used to designate a point attack, where the pilot must visually confirm their target. Line 2 is used to relay the JTAC's position to the pilot and marker type if any. Location can be given using 6 or 8 digit grid coordinates or bull's call. Markers can be no mark, IR strobe, or smoke. Line 3 is used for target location. It can be given as a magnetic bearing and range from the JTAC's position given in line 2, or as a 6 or 8 digit grid coordinate or bull's call. Line 4 is used for target description and marker type if any. Markers can be no mark, smoke, laser, IR strobe, or IR laser. Line 5 is used for remarks, such as those in the 9 line. If there are none, use no remarks. I will now show an example of how to create a 9 and 5 line brief. Before you can create a cast mission, you must first ensure you have the necessary tools, which consists of a map, compass, GPS, laser designator, something to write with, and something to write on. I personally use a laminated 9 line card with a 5 line card on the back and a dry erase marker. I will start off by showing a quick and dirty method of getting rough distance measurements without using shift click or map tool add-ons. The default compass can be used as a fairly accurate ruler when the need arises. Because the length of your compass may vary due to interface size and other factors, it is a good idea to gauge yours in the following way. When I align my compass with the grid lines and zoom to the first level of 100 by 100 meter squares, my compass is about 10 meters shy of 600 meters. When I drop to the second zoom level of 100 by 100, my compass is about 515 meters. The first thing you need to do when creating a cast mission is find and mark your location on the map. This is easily done by using your GPS. As with all marks, be sure to only use vehicle chat. After marking your location, locate your target and get its bearing and range from your position. With this info, open the map and using the compass, mark the location of your target.
Once the target has been marked, you can fill out your nine line brief. Line one is gold. The target is due west of IP gold, so line two is 270. You can determine the distance from the IP to the target by using the grid squares or the compass. In this case, line three is going to be 2300. Line four can be found by placing the pointer over the target marker. The bottom number is the elevation. In this case, it is 202 meters. Line five is T100. Line six is grid 044041. Line seven is laser. Line eight is 535 meters northwest. Line nine is pilot discretion. Remarks will be use GBU-12, make final attack heading 120. Although the IP is due east of the target, I want my aircraft to approach from the west so they can acquire the mark, as that is the side I will be lasing on. I put a slight offset on the attack heading so that the aircraft doesn't fly directly over my position. My nine line is now complete and ready to be passed to the pilot. Now on to the five line example. This time we will be calling in an AH-9 for a rocket strike on a group of infantry. Because I am inside of a house, I may not be able to visually acquire the attacking aircraft, so I will use Type 2 control. I want them to put rockets down on the area where the infantry is located, so the MOA will be BOC. So Line 1 will be 5 Line, Type 2 control, MOA is BOC, request 6 times DAR. Using my GPS, Line 2 is 138198 marked by IR strobe. Line 3 is 400 meters southwest. Line 4 is infantry around a campfire marked by IR laser. Because I want the helo to fly right to left from my position, I will give a final attack heading of 140. I noticed some power lines on my way into this house, so I will head out now to check their direction. Line 5 is make final attack heading 140. High power lines above my location, running west to east. Now I will mark my position with an IR strobe and move back into the house and radio in my 5 line and stand by to mark the target. Lesson 5, Aircraft Checkout. The purpose of the aircraft checkout is to ensure the JTAC knows that the aircraft is leaving the AO and will be unavailable for tasking. If an aircraft needs to RTB for any reason such as being damaged, no ordnance remaining, or bingo fuel, the pilot should immediately check out with the JTAC. To do so, the pilot simply needs to make radio contact with the JTAC and state that he needs to RTB and the reason why. The JTAC will acknowledge the request and clear the aircraft to depart. Although a pilot can begin the return trip immediately, they must wait until they have clearance from the JTAC before they switch to the tower or field frequency and report their inbound. This is to ensure that the JTAC has received their checkout. The JTAC can also clear an aircraft to depart or resume a prior mission without a request from the aircraft if the current mission is complete and there is no further tasking available. As a JTAC, you should never deny a request for checkout if doing so will put the pilot in unnecessary danger. If the aircraft returns to the AO after being repaired, refueled, or rearmed, they will check in again using the same procedures discussed in Lesson 3. This concludes Part 2 of the Joint Terminal Attack Controller Certification course. Please see Part 3 for the final lesson.